Won't you let me dream That you're mine again For just one dance So let my blue heart pretend I'm just a fool And I can't get over you So let me dream If my dreams can come true I know you remember What we used to have If you wanna throw that all away How it makes me feel so sad Won't you let me dream Oh, what else can I do Won't you let me dream If my dreams can come true that all away how it makes me feel so sad won't you let me dream what else can I do won't you let me dream if my dreams can come true so guys here you have it the long anticipated tilt afloat the Tilt Afloat comes in this nice and sturdy box and for everybody who was expecting a Peli case at this price point, not gonna happen. As you can see the inside of the box is made of a custom foam. It's nice, the layout makes a lot of sense and uh, yeah, I would say this works for me. So in the box you obviously have the supporting arm that mounts via a Ari Rosette type of mount to this belt or west as they like to call it. And it also has an extendable sort of back support that you can adjust here. For anybody who wants to rock a little more heavy setups, you also have some sort of shoulder belt that you can put over your shoulder that adds an additional layer of support. However, I don't find this to be very useful because the main weight will be on your lower back anyways with this setup. Of course, you also get the tilt-top post, this here, which is the heart of everything. Here also have a monitor mount where you can mount your smartphone or your monitor, as well as a wireless thumb control that goes in here. Speaking of, the wireless thumb controller of the tilt afloat it is run by a GoPro 8 battery. A lot of people might ask themselves like, why in the hell would Tilta of all the batteries in the world choose to go with a GoPro 8 battery? I think there's three reasons for that. The first one is form factor, the second one is capacity, and the third one, most important, is availability. So as you can see with this wireless thumb control, there is not a lot of space to put in a battery, and therefore you need a battery with a small form factor. The capacity of this battery is 1220 milliampere hour, and this is enough to power this thumb controller for, I don't know, a week or something. I have reviewed this unit for about a week and I never had to recharge the GoPro Hero 8 battery, so that speaks for itself. But I think the most important reason why they went with the GoPro Hero 8 battery is availability, because you can buy GoPro Hero 8s everywhere in the world and also batteries. And I think this makes a lot more sense than, you know, just developing your own battery that will be proprietary, yet another charging station that you would need just for this battery. So I think when you consider all of these factors, it makes a lot of sense that Tilta actually implemented a GoPro Hero 8 battery in this one here. Of course, you also get the counterpiece, the wireless thumb control that I will be the wireless receiver. And on the top you have the power supply plate for the DJI RS2 that connects with a Lamo pin cable and the wires that's really cool about this device are actually hidden inside of the post and will then connect to your preferred solution, in my case a V-mount. You also get a stiffener that goes on the left side of your handle of your gimbal just to, you know, make things a bit better connected and make it a bit safer and it also covers up the pin port somewhat. There's a bunch of other stuff in the box, but I think we covered most of the important things and you'll find a complete list in the description of this video. I think the overall build quality of the Tilt Afloat is really good. 
you have a lot of metal parts and also the post is made out of carbon fiber so nothing to criticize here. However, when it comes to the vest or to the belt as I'd like to call it, there are no quality complaints here as well, it's built phenomenally. Um, but I think in the ergonomics we have some things that need to be figured out, but more on that later. So this is not going to be a tutorial on how to balance your tilt afloat. I think these are already out there by the manufacturer and Best Boy Adam. But I can give you a quick rundown on how I think things work. First things first, of course, you need to pre-balance your gimbal and then run the calibration of the DJI RS2. Then you mount it on the tilt-top float post. After you have balanced the whole thing so it stays horizontally even, you need to make sure that the roll is the roll of the tilt to float that is is balanced properly. This goes in two steps. Basically, the first one is you adjust um, your left and right here on the Nano X rail in order that the display stays upwards. The final thing you have to do is to adjust the position of uh, the gimbal so that the post rotates back within one or two seconds when you turn it sideways. One, two, one, two. Yeah, should be pretty decent. The next step, and that is probably the most frustrating, admittedly, about this piece of equipment, is putting it on the arm and adjusting the arm until it floats. So the first step in this setup process is that you get the spring power correct. They should be when everything is loaded sort of horizontally. So I think here we have a bit too much still, a bit too much. See, now it rests perfectly horizontally. So here this is where the Tilta Flow probably has its biggest weakness in my opinion. The mounting point between the belt and the arm. It's done with two Ari Rosette kind of mounts. One for the tilt in order to adjust the tilt of the float arm and one for the roll. And I think the one on the roll is the one where probably most people struggle with. In order to adjust the roll rosette mount, you have to make sure that there is no weight whatsoever on here. So gently lift it up here. And as you can see, with two fingers, I can adjust it super easy. Just make sure that everything here is relaxed. So then you will go ahead, find a good and still resting point that is very important. You can't just wiggle around and expect this thing to float, obviously. Mm, shoots to the left a little bit. Let's give it a try. Ooh, that was a bit too generous on the right. Oh, by the way, a little tip before you put on the float post, I would always like make a little stress test in order to make sure that the rosette mount is properly closed. One eternity later. Hmm, should be fairly good. So I've had the tilt afloat for a little bit more than a week and that gave me enough time to put it through quite some testing, different shooting situations and I also had three different camera setup. Here, my main driver, the Sony A7S III with a lightweight 35mm and the Peter McKinnon variable ND. But also put on a red Komodo with a Sigma 18 to 35 Art. But while using the red Komodo on the tilt afloat, I noticed a few things. This was actually my first shot ever with the tilt afloat. I just took it out of the box, assembled it, put the red on and went over to Florian's place to shoot a little sequence. As you can see, there are a few micro jitters here and there. The framing is not optimal. And what I also noticed is it is borderline impossible to pull focus at the same time as operating the tilt afloat. When it comes to maximum payload capacity, the bottleneck of the tilt afloat is the gimbal mounted. The DJI RS2 has a maximum payload capacity of 4.5 kilos, and I think the setup that I went for with my Red Komodo is fairly conservative, so you can go for a bit more like a map box, a follow focus, external video output, and so on and so forth. As a general rule of thumb, one could say that the tilt afloat can handle everything that DJI RS2 can handle as well. However, I figured that more lightweight cameras are probably more optimal, especially if you want to operate the tilt afloat for a longer period of time. But one thing that comes in super clutch when you use the Red Komodo with the tilt afloat is the Red Control app, which is available for free both for iOS and Android devices. And this app lets you control your Red wirelessly using your smartphone or tablet. It's super useful and you also get a pretty much lag-free stream straight out of camera. 
And a good friend of mine, Rito from Black Sky Pictures, he's linked in the description below. If you ever need a drone operator in Switzerland, by the way, he is the man. He helped me out and we put his Blackmagic Pocket 4K on it. The Blackmagic Pocket 4K is, in my opinion, generally not a favorable camera to put on an RS2 in the first place because the body is just super wide. But you can definitely do it and it works like a charm on the tilt-a-float and RS2 combo. Don't get me wrong, it's really good. We even went as far as to try the whole system on a Segway. And I think with a bit of exercising and a bit of testing, you can get pretty damn decent shots. I mean, take this hero shot that Reto got after like playing around for it with 20 minutes. However, my favorite setup for both the RS2 and the Tilt-A-Flow combination is the Sony A7S III. As a one-man band, this setup gets really good if you combine it with a DJI Raven Eye and also with the active track that is inside of the Ronin app. You can get a lot of stuff done with great autofocus, Raven Eye support, an active track, and this whole setup here. I tested the tilt of flow for a bit more than a week and I've put it through various shooting scenarios. And I can confidently say that this device takes some getting used to. Don't expect miracles straight out of the box. It's not gonna be an experience like you know, with a DJI drone where you just put everything together, put it up in the air and you're immediately set to go. No. This device is very demanding. It takes a lot of time getting used to and I am by far not done after one week of testing it. So what I like about this system is the general idea of its existence because it is a disruptive device that gets a new form of stabilization into the hand of more creators. I also really like the build quality. I mean, this feels like a serious piece of equipment. And I also really like the ability of the tilt float to, as you can see, filter out the walking steps in my gimbal footage, because I've always felt this is like a weak point of gimbals. The whole setup looks like a finished product that I can easily see myself using on sets. Now things I do not like too much about this setup is probably its only weakness in my opinion and that is the belt. Like this belt is very demanding and I think the better solution would be some sort of shoulder strap mount. Now knowing Tilta I can definitely see that they would offer this sometimes down the road. But for now you really need to exercise and make some core exercises in order to be able to run this pup before a full day, especially if you have a heavier setup, quote unquote heavy, with let's say, yeah, a red Komodo. Now the other thing I don't really like is the rosettes here because I think this could be implemented better. And I think a really good way of solving this is giving us a mechanism similar to what we have to adjust the forward and backward tilt position of the camera on an RS2. That would be really cool. So, $1,500 question. Should you buy the tilt afloat or shouldn't you? I think here the decision is not as black and white as it is with other devices. And I think whether or not you should buy the tilt afloat pretty much comes down to the type of person that you are. If you are a serious video creator that needs this extra bit of stabilization and that is in need of making moves like this going up, down, all the way over the place, then the tilt afloat with some time and dedication will do wonders for you. And this device needs some time and love. I think you shouldn't buy the tilt afloat if you're the following type of person. You're a person that likes simple, straight out of the box solutions that work without putting any sort of effort into it. Don't mean to judge here, that's fair. And we have a lot of filmmaking products like, you know, the DJI drones for instance. They work straight out of the box. However, if you expect this device here to just work after testing for like, what, 30 minutes or an hour? you're gonna have a very bad time because this needs some fine tuning. You need to put in a lot of work. And I mean, there is a reason that we still have dedicated Steadicam operators to this very day. This is an art form in itself. And don't make the mistake of thinking that this device here is a easy shortcut to get you the RE Trinity kind of shots. No, you still have to properly balance it. You still have to exercise you have to be in shape to run this thing for a full day. Those are all requirements the tilt afloat will not free you of. Now to come to a conclusion, I personally enjoyed the challenge the tilt afloat gave me. You have to figure out its quirks, how it works. I can definitely see that someone might up their game quite significantly using a tilt afloat. 
If you've enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to us if you give it a like, a subscription and comment what you think about it in the comment section below. So until then, keep creating and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cut!